And once it's done, we're just gonna set this to the side and let it meld together. Emily convinced me that meld is a word. It's literally in the dictionary. Well, so is sciency, but I don't use that word every day. I don't think sciency is in the dictionary. Sciency is in the dictionary. Look it up. Leave in the comment below if you find it, and then say, <laughs> hey Emily, I found the word sciency. <laughs> Please do this, guys. Hey guys, Ryan here with The Way We Hunt. So we weren't planning on bringing you a video today, um, but then as I was scrolling through Instagram, I saw that it was National Cheeseburger Day. So you kinda, I can't, I can't let that go. So had to come up with something on the fly, so here's what we're gonna do. We're making stuffed smoked antelope burgers. I think I got that right. It's gonna be um, a black buck antelope that I shot at the 345 ranch back in 2019. We got a couple pounds of it. It's gonna be smoked or stuffed with smoked Gouda and Munster cheese that we made a couple of days ago for another recipe. And then some other stuff. And we're gonna cook it on the Rectech. So stick around. Happy National Cheeseburger Day. Let's get cooking. And yeah, by the way, the twist, which I can't believe I forgot, it's gonna be glazed with a homemade peanut butter and barbecue glaze, and then maybe more peanut butter, because if you've never had peanut butter on a cheeseburger, you're missing out in your life. I'm telling you, it sounds strange, it's really good, you gotta try it. All right, so we are out at the Rectech 1250, the RT 1250, sorry. First thing we're gonna do, and all the ingredients, obviously, in the cooking directions will be in the description box below. This part is not on there as far as what to do with the bacon, and the bacon in the description box, it's gonna say, fry it up in a pan. If you have a grill or smoker and you want to smoke your bacon or grill your bacon on the grill instead of a pan, do that. So that's what we're gonna do though. Anyways, on to the RT-1250 it goes. So the RT-1250 is my fave go-to now because of the two racks. So there we go. I didn't need the top rack, but it's just easier to access. So we're gonna let this cook up and we're gonna go back inside and make up the peanut butter barbecue mixture. All right, so the bacon is smoking slash cooking on the Rectech, and so now we're gonna make the peanut butter and barbecue glaze slash sauce. Now, you do not need a food processor. You can completely whisk this all together, but we have a food processor, so why wouldn't I use the food processor? Anyway, so what you're gonna need is some sort of red pepper flakes. We're using the Flatiron Pepper Company. This is, I've, I ordered a whole kit uh, of different peppers. This has, Arbol, Ghost, Habanero, and Jalapeno. And we're super excited about it. They're already smoked. It's already... Um, I'm not excited. She's very excited. I'm not. It's already chopped up. We got some Chinese five spice. We got rice vinegar, ketchup, soy sauce, peanut butter, and honey. That's gonna make our honey barbecue sauce. So, starting out, uh, let's get the red pepper out of the way. We're only gonna do one teaspoon. This is gonna go a long way. Oh, good. It's all downhill from here, honey. Uh, we'll do the five spice. We're gonna do a full tablespoon of it. Then we're not gonna do it that way, though. No. Do a whole tablespoon of that. Why are you putting five spice in it? So I, I looked at a lot of different recipes. And, you know, so here's, here's the rub. You could, if you wanna do this really fast, you could literally probably take your own barbecue sauce that you really like, like store-bought barbecue sauce, like we like a lot of Rectech sauces. And just cut it with a little bit of peanut butter, maybe a splash of tomato paste and some vinegar, and you would be golden. I've never made the peanut butter barbecue glaze. I just wanna make it. I researched a lot of recipes. Almost all of them have Chinese five spice in them. So that's why I put Chinese five spice. So anyway, uh, I think we'll go ahead and do soy sauce now. We're gonna do three tablespoons of it. We're gonna do a quarter cup of ketchup. You probably didn't need to really measure this. I mean, there's probably really nothing in here that's gonna get your feelings hurt if you did a little bit too much or too less of it. You could probably go overboard with the peppers. I'll, I'll give him leave that. Um, we'll go vinegar next. We'll go, it says two tablespoons. Some of them say two and some of them say three. We're just gonna go two. We'll go a heavy two. And then we'll go peanut butter. I'm torn between two and three, I just don't know. We'll, we'll start, we'll, we'll go too heavy. 
How's that? We'll do a heavy two and a half tablespoons. And I'm a thousand percent gonna have to wash my fingers here in a second. And then we'll go honey, it just says a tablespoon. I'm not gonna measure that, I'm just going to give it a nice jot of honey. All right. Let's get to blending or mixing. So this smells very sweet. Obviously it's sweet. It's got the peanut butter and the honey in it, but wow. Like any good chef, I shall taste before I serve. It's got a very vinegary bite right off the bat. Kind of barbecue-y. Very peanut buttery. I don't know, that's fair, that's very cool. So, I love this. I don't love it, I like it a lot. And we didn't like it so much, but it's very, very strong, but it, this isn't a dip, it's just gonna be a glaze. So you probably don't wanna dip something in this. We're just glazing it and caramelizing it. So we're gonna set this to the side. And now we're gonna mix up our antelope mixture. All right, so two pounds of black buck antelope that I shot at the 345 ranch, like in 2019, I think. Um, anyway. Me and Emily process ourselves. We mix it with pork shoulder or pork fat. I've got a little bit of Rectex heifer dust. I'm not gonna go crazy here. Because I don't wanna overpower the flavor of the burger with just like a bunch of random stuff. But I'm gonna mix this in. Nice and uniformish. And once it's done, we're just gonna set this to the side and let it meld together. Emily convinced me that meld is a word. It's literally in the dictionary. Well, so is sciency, but I don't use that word every day. I don't think sciency is in the dictionary. Sciency is in the dictionary. Look it up. Leave in the comment below if you find it, and then say, <laughs> hey Emily, I found the word sciency. <laughs> Please do this, guys. All right, so just gonna brown this up. You guys don't need to see the whole process. I've got about a tablespoon, I got a heavy tablespoon in here of butter. And if you aren't chopping onions up and then putting them in Ziploc bags and freezing them, you are wasting too much time in the kitchen. Now they won't keep forever, but if you cook a lot and you cook a lot with onions, um, if you will just brown some up, or sorry, chop some up and fill up like a quart Ziploc bag of just diced onions and throw them in the freezer, next time you need diced onions, you don't have to go through the process and the pain of chopping up an onion. It's just in the freezer, you pull it out, they keep for actually quite a while. That's exactly what I did here. Pulled out about a cup of onions, I don't know that we'll need that many, but I just got them here in the butter, in the pan. I'm just gonna cook these until they become a little translucent and get just a little bit of color on them. I don't wanna brown them up um, quite yet because these are going inside of the burger. So, as soon as these start to get a little translucent, show just a little bit of brown on the edges, uh, I'm gonna pull them from the heat. All right, so onions are done. They're cooling off out here at the Rec Tech. And that bacon is about exactly where I want it. And if you put your bacon on a cooling rack like that, it will cool down much, much faster. So, bacon is done. I'm leaving the Rectech at 350. Shut it down. And next we're gonna crumble this up and get it ready for the burgers. All right, so that's about the consistency of the bacon. I actually just threw ours in the food processor because we had it out. You can wait until it's completely cool and just crumble it, but that's about the consistency that I think I'm looking for. So, the reason you don't want it hot, so when you're mixing it with, with your beef or your antelope in this case, or your venison or your elk or whatever, you just don't want it cooking your meat, right? You don't want it to start that cooking process. So, as long as it's cool enough to the touch, it's not hot, that's completely fine. All right, so, I've got my little workspace set up. I just tossed down uh, some parchment paper. So, I'm gonna make a really flat, Patty, that is way too big. Um, so imagine like a smash burger, right? You want this fairly thin, and you know, you can make this as, as big as you wanted, really. Let's take some of these onions that we've kind of caramelized up here a little bit. Don't want too many, because this thing gets out of hand pretty quick. Speaking from experience. Some of our crumbled bacon. All right, so this is smoked Munster and Gouda slices that I'm just gonna kind of overlap here. Mm -hmm. 
Then all you're gonna do is grab an identical patty and kind of make it over here to the side. You wanna make this one maybe just a touch bigger because you're gonna overlap this. Because they're thin, they're not gonna take just an awful long time to cook. You just wanna make sure it's nice and condensed in there. There's probably a better word for that. Anyway, let's layer right over the top. You're gonna form your edges, kind of push down the edges. I could have probably gone a little bit bigger with that one. It's okay though. And then I like to just take my thumb and make it nice and flat around the sides. And I'm gonna flip this over in just a minute and do the same exact thing. And you just don't want a seam. You don't want a visible seam around the edge because that's where your cheese is gonna evacuate on you. Anyway, gonna look something just about like that. All right, so we're gonna make two of these tonight and uh, we'll go from there. So we are losing light fast, I apologize. We both had to work all day and it's halfway through the day before I even thought about National Cheeseburger Day. So what we're gonna do is, well, we got our burgers here, we've got our dip or glaze. So I'm literally just going to brush this on one side and around the edges that I can get and it's going on the grill glaze side down. That's the sound I'm looking for. Do the same thing with the other one. We're gonna cook those like that for about five minutes and then we're gonna flip them, glaze the other side, let those cook for about five minutes, flip them again and then check our temperature and they should be just about done. Like I said, they look like they're big. They're probably half to three quarters of a pound. The second one I made is pretty big. It's probably a solid three quarters of a pound, but we started out with two pounds of meat and we have probably a half pound left over, give or take. So not as big as they look, they just take up a lot of space. So. We'll get these cooking. We're gonna try to fix some lighting for you guys and we'll be right back. So it's been five minutes. We're gonna glaze these before we flip them. Now that those are glazed on that side, I'll take my super spatula here. Yeah, those look pretty fantastic. And we're gonna go another five minutes. All right, so it's been another five-ish minutes. These are looking fantastic. So I'm gonna do a very light glaze, not, not real heavy. I don't wanna overpower this. So this, and if you notice, I actually put some more bacon crumbles on it because it's bacon. Just a couple minutes, I'm gonna check the temperature on those. Make sure the cheese is melted. It's a problem, it's messy. If your burgers aren't messy, is it really a burger? Uh, it's a 145 degrees internal, so the cheese should be nice and melted. I think we got some cheese starting to escape a little bit, so. Out. look horrible. So we're going to put them in foil here. And we're going to tint these up and let these rest while we put some butter on a couple brioche buns. Good thing about uh, direct text like this, the hopper cover acts as a warmer. So this is actually pretty warm. Wrapped in foil, it's gonna keep those nice and warm. So, brioche buns, buttered in the rec tech. We're gonna take the buns in, or the meat inside, let it rest for about five minutes. That's what I'm gonna give these. Uh, right now it's set at 400 degrees still, and those should be nice and charred around the edges, nice and crisp. Then we're gonna build our burgers.
I was gonna put more cheese on it because you know it's National Cheeseburger Day, but then I start thinking about it. I don't want to overpower what we got going on. There's a lot going on with this. We got the sauce, glaze over it. We've got the caramelized onions, we've got bacon, we've got antelope, and we've got smoked Gouda and Munster in there also. So I, I'm just gonna leave it. What I am gonna do, however, is a thin layer. This bun is perfect. A very, very thin layer of peanut butter on top and bottom. I'm going to use some pickles here. I like pickles on my burger. So these are maple bourbon uh, chips. They're almost like a bread and butter, I found them. You can use whatever you want. I'm building this backwards, by the way. I'm trying not to get it soggy. All right. Then I'm gonna take the burger, which turns out fantastic. Oh, look at that. That is a burger. We'll give her a little smash. So one thing I am gonna add, just because it's me, is just a little bit of creamy sriracha, just for color more than anything. Not for taste at all? Yeah. yeah I like creamy sriracha, but Emily doesn't, so I'm just gonna go super light on it. Here we go. Oh man. say I was gonna go over the table but I can't wait this thing is smells and looks fantastic so here we go happy national cheeseburger day got the foot tap wow I thought the sauce the glaze was gonna be overpowering it's not at all. It's just freaking good. There's a lot to process. Smoke, obviously right off the bat, doesn't to me, a lot of people think antelope doesn't taste good. I know it's a black buck, but tastes phenomenal as far as the meat consistency and the, the mouth feel. The meat is perfect for a burger. Get some crunch from the butter lettuce, some peanut butter in there. The barbecue glaze is very light. Um, you could actually probably have gone more. Um, so if you're making this and you want a really strong, like really tangy barbecue and peanut butter taste, then, then do more glazing than we did. But that's, it's, it's so good. And the creamy sriracha at the end was perfect. It's not hot, there's no heat to it. It's just more of a kind of a tangy follower, so. I'm gonna grab the camera now because Emily's gonna get in on this because I wanna see her reaction. Mm. But I just got a hit of the peanut butter. That's really good with the smoke flavor. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic. There's a lot going on with this burger, but everything comes together really well. It melds together really well. I like the pickles on it. The meat has a really great smoke flavor. It has a surprise on the inside with the bacon and the onions and the cheese. And then, of course, you know, you can't go wrong with brioche. The only thing that I could think that it could make better is just more cheese because I just like cheese. But yeah, happy cheeseburger day. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe button, comment. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Long. <laughs> tell us what we're doing wrong. This is the way we hunt. And I'm going to eat this uh, Black Buck Burger. So, peace.